the law and you a look at laws in st vincent and the grenadines which affect our daily lives the law and you presented by lawyer panel r campbell qc and brought to you on svg tv as a public service ladies and gentlemen brothers and sisters boys and girls greetings welcome to another presentation in this public service nation building series the law and you this is program number 861 and it is coming to you on Monday, the 8th of May, 2017. On this program, I will speak to you on the topic, the accountability issue. But before getting into the topic, a few preliminary matters, which I would try to make as short as possible. Firstly, condolences go out to those families which have suffered recent bereavements. And in particular, my heart goes out to the family of the two brothers who were found at Cyan Hill Bay, apparently with gunshot wounds. One a policeman and the other one his younger brother. I can only imagine the feelings of the parents of those two boys to have lost two sons in such a tragic and apparently violent way. My heart really goes out to that family, even though I don't know them. Uh, last week, Wednesday, there was a very beautiful send-off service at the Kingdom Life Ministries at Curtains for our late brother, Ken Stay who was affectionately known to all and sundry as one of the great musicians in the musical Crookshank family. The service was practically a concert. I enjoyed it so much. And then at the end of it all, Dr. Peter Bonnady, who used to pastor that church and now lives abroad, came back and he delivered a masterful sermon. Words of comfort at that funeral service. My condolences once again go to the Crookshank family, who are my relatives, fairly close relatives at that. Now, Next Sunday will be Mother's Day, and I want to take the opportunity to wish a happy Mother's Day to all mothers in the nation, and in particular, those in my own family. Happy Mother's Day to one and all. Thirdly, congratulations to Gecko on the launching of yet another branch, which would have taken place this afternoon. In fact, it's not yet well, it, they're probably on the way now because it's, it's after three. And by the time you hear this program, it would be minutes to nine. So, Gecko has now established a branch in the following places. Of course, the head office is in Kingstown. It has a branch in Georgetown, one in Beckway, one in Canwan, and one in Union Island. And this afternoon there would have been launched a branch in South Rivers. My congratulations to Gecko and to the people of South Rivers who now have a financial facility right on their doorstep, as it were. Uh, now, <clears throat> I want to thank you once again for the support you have been giving me for the 20th anniversary of the law and you. The last program which was broadcast week before the last Monday was the 20th anniversary program, number 860. Many of you missed it, and I have been bombarded with requests for a repetition. So, next week, Monday night, DV would be a repetition of program 860, where the voices of the people would be heard. It would be an exact replica of the last program. I have just asked the technicians to repeat it. So those of you who were interviewed on the program would get the opportunity to see ourselves, some for the first time, some who were interviewed have seen the program before. And I'm thankful to all of you who took part 
in the program. I want to thank the management of SVG TV for permitting me to use up some of the wrestling time <laughs> next week, Monday night, but it's not a lot, less than a quarter of an hour. Um, so my apologies to you devoted fans of wrestling. You'll be losing a few minutes next Monday night as the anniversary program stretched over the half an hour limit. But I hope you will bear with me and you will get back your wrestling all by yourse all to yourselves Mon week after next Monday evening. Now, <clears throat> there is going to be a very important book launching tomorrow afternoon at 4.30 in the afternoon at Memorial Hall. Dr. Audrey Gittens, whom many people remember as a nurse. In fact, she used to be a policeman too. She will be launching her autobiography, Crossing the Chasms of Life. A little bit of heaven and a lot of hell. Now, let me tell you, I have read this book. In fact, from the time I got a copy last night, it simply last week, simply couldn't put it down. It is compelling reading, and I warrant you, you are going to enjoy this book very, very much. I want to implore you, if you can come to the launching at 4.30 at Memorial Hall tomorrow afternoon, please do that in support of the sister. If you can't, then make sure you get a copy of this book. If you have children, you can buy it for them to read. It is a remarkable story of a young woman who went through a lot of perils and pressures. You simply have to read this. I mean, I. I as usual, I have bought a copy for every one of my children. I usually buy copies of all locally published books for all of my children. And let me give you a heads up. Towards the end of this month, on the early part of June, Dr. Cyrus would be launching his third book, his fourth book, in fact, which will be an autobiography. It's going to be, it's called A Harvest Richer Than Gold, The Odyssey of a Caribbean Surgeon. I've had the opportunity to read quite a few chapters of that book, and let me tell you, it is probably Dr. Cyrus's best publication. So look out for that launch. I'll have more to say about that in due course, but look out for the launch of Dr. Cyrus's next book, and you would not regret it comes after clinical and pathological atlas then dr grandad and then a dream come true and then there follows this book a harvest richer than gold you will hear the date of the launching in due course okay i think that is all for preliminaries let me get into the topic for the evening accountability, the accountability issue. Now, if you didn't get a copy of Searchlight for last Friday the 5th of May, go out and get one tomorrow. In addition to the weekly, because tomorrow, Tuesday, the midweek Searchlight will be out. But this one of Friday contains two articles. And those articles have inspired me to produce tonight's program, The Accountability Issue. The first one you will find on page 11 by Dr. Adrian Fraser. It is called The Accountability Issue, A View. Now, Dr. Fraser, quite apart from being my lifelong friend, I attended his mother's preschool when we were both toddlers four or five years old in Barley. So I've known Adrian all his life. Dr. Fraser's column is a must read for me. There are certain columns I look forward to reading every week when I get the newspapers. Dr. Fraser's is one of them. And last week's Friday uh, issue, 
the accountability issue is one which I will commend to anyone interested in public affairs and anyone who has been following the controversy over the issue of accountability as it surrounds the Argyle International Airport. And in the same search light, and this is why I have encouraged you to go and get a copy and keep it, on page 14, there is a full-page article by the Prime Minister called Argyle International Airport, Accountability Assured. You need to read these two articles to really understand the nature of the controversy. And unfortunately, as matters normally go in St. Vincent and the Grenadines, we tend to obscure rational discussion with hot-tempered outpourings on the radio. These are matters for sober, calm discussion so that we can see what are the various viewpoints. Now, the gist of Dr. Fraser's article is that notwithstanding what the law provides, the important aspect of the discussion is the question of accountability. And he is positing, or has posited, that what is important is that the government should demonstrate accountability in its handling of the finances for the Argyle International Airport. The Prime Minister agrees with that. The Prime Minister's article is very illuminating. He starts by saying, for the past 16 years of government, the Unity Labour Party administration has made accountability and transparency in government to be among its outstanding hallmarks. What has created, or the number of the controversy as I understand it, is that the Argyle International Airport was placed in the hands of a government-owned company, the IADC, International Airport Development Company Limited. This body has a board of directors appointed by the government and a, as a company, its accounts are filed with SIPO, the Commerce and Intellectual Property Office. And the Prime Minister is at pains to point out that Within the operations of the company, the IADC company, there has been accountability because its procedures are followed scrupulously and the accounts are lodged at SIPO in accordance with the Company Act, the law governing companies. He indicated that the accounts up to 2013 have been lodged with SIPO, but the accounts for 2014 and 15 are not yet fully audited. And in due course, they will be audited and lodged with SIPO. So far, so good. But the point Dr. Fraser is making is that for such a mammoth capital venture, and as we all know, the Argyle International Airport has been by far the largest single capital project ever undertaken in the history of St. Vincent and the Grenadines. And those were the words of the Prime Minister at the launching. Dr. Fraser is saying that for an enterprise of that size, it isn't enough to say 
that the accounts of the company that has developed the airport under the auspices of the government, it is not enough to say those accounts are larger than the company's office. That doesn't satisfy the rules of accountability. And one has to agree with Dr. Fraser in that respect. And I have a proposal to make before this program is finished, which I hope will, if accepted, meet the requirements of accountability in this particular issue. So the Prime Minister on the one hand is arguing, quite correctly, that the law has been complied with in that the accounts have been published with the office where, by law, company accounts are to be lodged. But unfortunately, the lodging of accounts at SIPO does not mean that the accounts have been placed in a forum where they can be debated. That is the big difference between the accounts of a government-owned company, on the one hand, and the accounts of a statutory corporation or a department of government, on the other hand. Statutory bodies are required by the statutes which set them up. They are required to have their accounts tabled in Parliament by the minister on the whose portfolio they fall. So those accounts of statutory bodies are liable to be debated in Parliament. Not so companies and not so government companies. Government companies, like any other company, would be required to file their accounts at SIPO. But SIPO is not a debating chamber where you have the representatives of the people gathered together to debate them. So there is a gap in our administrative law. When we had the Constitutional Revision Committee, CRC, we spotted that. And we proposed in the proposed new constitution a mechanism to deal with that situation. The time does not permit on this program, but for those who still have, you remember this? <laughs> Proposed the new constitution? Let me just invite you to look at sections eight, uh, 85, 158 and 228 because we recognized that there were gaps in accountability in government. And we made a certain prescription. I've debated this on this, not well, discussed it on this program time and time again. And I will probably return to it in greater detail. But for those of you who still have your copies of this document, sections 85, 158, and 228 will show you how we had proposed. In particular, let me just quote you section 85, subsection 4, what we had proposed. But of course, this was rejected by the people. The standing orders of the assembly shall provide for a procedure by which the public accounts committee may summon public officers before it and send for relevant public financial documents 
in order to ensure the proper discharge of its responsibilities under this Constitution and our laws. So we had proposed that the Public Accounts Committee should be given the power to summon any public officer before it and to send for any relevant government financial document. If that constitution had been accepted and if those provisions had become part of our constitutional law, then the Public Accounts Committee, which we proposed, should have had a majority of members being opposition members. That committee would have had the right to summon any financial document from the government including financial documents pertaining to government-owned companies. But the Constitution was rejected, so we are left back to the situation where there is a Public Accounts Committee, yes, theoretically, but it has no powers because, for one thing, the majority of its members consist of members on the government side, and it has no powers to summon documents and summon public officers before it. Now, the Argyle International Airport is a special project, and its accounts need to be debated by the representatives of the people. And I don't say this as any criticism of the government or to express any hostility to the airport. As you know, from the word go, I have been a strong supporter of the Argyle International Airport. But the fact remains that the law which mandates the company running the airport and responsible for building the airport to lodge its accounts with the Department of Government known as CIPO is inadequate to provide the accountability that ought to be provided for a massive capital project costing, we are told, $700 million. So how do we get around that? Let us take the Prime Minister at his word. What should happen when the accounts up to 2016 have been audited? Those accounts, in addition to being lodged at SIPO in accordance with the Companies Act, ought to be lodged in Parliament, not because there is a law saying that they ought to be lodged in Parliament, but because the dictates of political accountability require such a step, and that is my proposal. Now, it will take some time before those accounts are fully audited, so when one isn't talking about something that happened in the next few months. But eventually, these accounts ought to be taken to Parliament by the Prime Minister, lodged in Parliament for debate by the members of Parliament. That would be real accountability. What we have now is theoretical accountability. In that, yes, when the accounts are laid, are filed with SIPO, members of the public could go and look at them, but it doesn't mean anything because, as I said before, members of the public looking at the accounts in SIPO do not have the benefit of debate in Parliament. And after all, that is what we have a Parliament for so that the government will have nothing to lose by taking the accounts and laying them in Parliament. There is nothing to prevent the government doing that. There is no law saying 
thou shalt not lay accounts of government companies in parliament. So even though the law says take them to Saibo, I am saying from a point of view of political accountability, which is what is important, and when you read Dr. Fraser's article, you will see that. In the interest of political accountability, take the accounts to parliament, lay them there, let them be debated. Nothing to hide. And rid the atmosphere of this cloud of uncertainty in which all sorts of allegations are made, whether they are founded or unfounded. You see, we can't let political controversy surround every aspect of governance and hope to make progress. So, I commend the Prime Minister's excellent article to you. I commend Dr. Fraser's excellent article to you, but I go further and encourage the government with all the persuasiveness I can muster, that when the airport accounts are audited, in addition to having the accounts lodged at SIPO in accordance with the law, those accounts should be brought to Parliament in accordance with political accountability. Perhaps a special session of Parliament could be put aside for debate on the accounts. Government has nothing to lose. On the other hand, the government would have a lot of credit to gain by demonstrating that it is not afraid of scrutiny of the airport accounts. Because after all, as we are told, there is a debt of some $400 million with which the consolidated fund would be saddled. Of course, some of it would be met by revenues derived from the airport, but an airport is not a profit-making venture. And the Agal International Airport is not going to make enough money to even pay for its maintenance. For, for the foreseeable future, monies would have to be voted in Parliament for the running of the airport. And if that is going to be the case, the government has everything to gain from ventilating these accounts and letting everybody see what went on. So I would urge the government to do what is wise and proper in the circumstances, lodge their accounts in Parliament when they are ready. And I can see that they are not ready. They can't be ready. But when they are ready, lodge them in Parliament. And it makes no sense to lodge those which are already there in Saipo and then a few months or years down the road, lodge the rest. Let us be patient and wait until all the relevant accounts are ready, then let them be debated in Parliament so that one and all can hear what exactly went on. I hope my comments would be taken in the spirit in which they are offered as one who has an abiding interest in the welfare of the people and the governance of this blessed land of ours, St. Vincent and the Grenadines. Okay, so that is all from this program of the law, new program number 861. Just to repeat for those who probably joined the program after I had started, next week, Monday, Divi, you will get a repetition of program 860, which was the anniversary program, consisting of the interviews with members of the public. So I would be back on live, as it were, week after next Monday, okay? And once again, happy Mother's Day to all you beautiful mothers of this state. So until 
I am back live on the air again. Here's hoping that you would have an enjoyable two weeks. Remember, next week is a repetition of the program. So I look forward to being a further service to you in due course for another presentation in this public service nation building series, The Law and You. May the good Lord continue to bless us all. The Law and You, a look at laws in St. Vincent and the Grenadines which affect our daily lives. The Law and You, law presented and by you. lawyer panel R. Campbell, QC, and brought to you on SVG TV as a public service.